What's up everyone, I'm Callum on Toast, and in today's video we've got the Battle of Spice World Championships featuring some of the spiciest battles you've ever seen submitted by 8 previous winners of the competition. We have a lot of really cool theme teams, plenty of outrageously spicy XL Pokemon and some absolutely insane wins. Since all 3 leagues are available right now, participants had the option to submit in any of the 3. Most chose to submit in the Great League, but all 3 leagues will be represented in this video. As usual, you'll be able to vote for your favourite spicy team when I make the polls here on YouTube in a few hours time. But with that being said, let's just get straight into the question of the day. What has been your favourite Battle of Spice video I've ever uploaded on the channel? If you're new to the channel, I strongly recommend watching the Battle of Spice playlist I've made because these are 100% the craziest GBL videos you'll ever see. Anyways, with that being said, let's just get straight into the battles now. So first up, we've got Robert Digiov who previously won the Battle of Spice in the Mountain Cup with a team of Cryogonal, XL Omanyte and XL Magnemite. This time they've chosen to submit a triple level 50 Ghost team in the Open Great League with Frillish, Drifloon and Ghastly. So let's get straight into the battle. Alright, so going into the first battle, we lead Frillish into Medicham, so a very good lead for us. The opponent's going to say swap into a Shadow Drapion. Now, unfortunately, running a triple Ghost team, we don't have great coverage, but we are running Bubble just for the sake of potentially doing a little bit better up against dark types we go for the ice beam and ice beam will connect it does a big damage to the opponent they do let it go through and now we are just going to fully sacrifice this frillish we got the drapion into potential farm down range and we are able to farm down with the licks from this ghastly the opponent's going to wait out their switch clock before coming in with a reggie steel now we can go straight for a dark pulse this is going to be non-stab but ghastly very attack weighted it's going to do quite a lot of damage and these licks are seriously chunking this Registeel right now. We're now going to use a shield. The opponent goes for the Zap Cannon. Zap Cannon does get the attack drop, so we swap into our Drifloon as the opponent comes back in with the Medicham. Now, Ice Punch is going to be super effective, but these counters are triple resisted, and we can go for an Icy Wind, debuffing their attack. So now, the next Ice Punch still won't be enough damage to take out the Drifloon from this range. So we're going to let it go through as well. The opponent goes for the Ice Punch, and they might not even be able to counter farm us down here, because Drifloon does have quite a lot of HP. We go for Icy Wind number two, grabbing a shield from the opponent, and we make it to the Shadow Ball here. We fully commit to the Shadow Ball. This will definitely take them out or grab the final shield. It grabs the final shield. We come in with the Ghastly, and the opponent comes back in with their Reggie Steel. We can now go for the Dark Pulse. Dark Pulse will be taking out the Reggie Steel. They come back in with Medicham, and we can safely shield this up. But no, we're actually going to call the Ice Punch there, and we're able to just barely live that and take that game. Next up, we've got Fly Gonna Get You, who previously won the competition in the Open Great League with a team of XL Ledian, XL Cubchu, and coincidentally also used an XL Magnemite. This time they've chosen to submit a triple level 50 ice team in the Open Great League with Alolan Sandshrew, Cubchu, and Amora. So let's get straight into the battle. Alright, so going into the next battle, we're going to see Alolan Sandshrew in the lead. This is a purified Alolan Sandshrew, and we are running Night Sash as well as Blizzard. We're going to go straight for the Night Sash here into this lantern, and the Night Sash gets the boost which is amazing for us because our backline isn't really going to do too well up against this lantern we're going to shield up the surf there unfortunate that they do bait with the surf but we're going to go for night sash number two we are now boosted it does a lot of damage and we get a second boost that is incredible for us we're now going to shield up and the opponent does full send the thunderbolt i'm wondering if we can go for a full resisted powder snow farm down it looks like we will as the opponent only commits to a surf there we get the full farm down and let's see what the opponent brings in the opponent is going to come in with a knocked out and we're going to full send this double boosted blizzard it one shots the knocked out i don't know why they didn't shield they've got a ferrothorn in the back and we might see a full alone and sandshrew sweep they even let the night sash go through what is the opponent doing we're now able to swap and catch the charge move onto our xl level 50 cub chew that does quite a lot of damage there and the opponent does barely outpace us to the next charge move but it does not matter power whip takes us out we can come in with the amora here go for the 
the Powder Snow farm down and we take that game. Next, we've got King Peria 464, who is a two time Battle Spice champion, winning in the Master League both times using a triple Shadow Grasshole team with Agron, Torterra, and Victory Bell, as well as winning, albeit with a significant amount of lag, with a great league team of Shadow Hound Doom, Alolan Sandslash, and Togekiss. This time, they've submitted a battle in the Master League once again with an updated Grasshole team of Rampardos, Purified Venusaur, and Purified Abomasaur. No. Let's get into the battle now. All right, so into the next battle. You can see it is a very low elo, but that doesn't really matter. It's all about the spice, and we lead into a SmackDown Tyranitar. We come in with Venusaur, and we're met with an Excadrill. We are running Razor Leaf, of course, because this is supposed to be a Grasshole team. We go for Frenzy Plant. The opponent lets it go through, and they come in with a Confusion Mewtwo. So it looks like the opponent also running a bit of a fast move beatdown team here, which is quite funny to see. We're going to come in with the Rampardos, use a shield here. Hopefully, we can get the smackdown farm down but these confusions are seriously chunking us can we get the farm down we barely get it and now we are actually going to commit no charge moves here go for the full fast move beat down can we outpace the opponent in fast move damage they go for the crunch they don't get the debuff which is fortunate for us can we get the farm down yes we can and we're able to take that game Next, we got Piropori, who is also a two-time winner of the competition, previously winning in the Love Cup with Rotom Wash, Hisuian Bravery, and XL Daily Bird, as well as winning in the Sunshine Cup with Shadow Mamoswine, XL Dojuo, and XL Purified Cacnea. This time, they've submitted a battle in the Great League, running Kanto Persian, a Little Cup Why Not, and XL Tranquil. Let's get into the battle now. All right, so going into the battle, we see Persian into Lucario, awful lead. We're gonna say swap into the 500 CP why not here and the opponent's just gonna go straight power up punch this isn't gonna do much damage but if they continue to ramp up their attack it's gonna be a bit troublesome for our back line here as we are now going to commit a shield here on the power up punch just to guarantee we get off this charge move and get off a few more counters because even though we're only 500 cp these counters are kind of chunky in this lucario but they do get a full power up punch farm down which is really not great for us we're gonna come in with the xl tranquil we do get the air slash through we're gonna have to let the first First move go through they will make it to a second power up punch most likely but we swap we catch it onto the persian but no we're actually going to use a shield anyways it is the power up punch and we are going to see a steelix come in but it looks like they're running Iron Tail was the fast move there, so not going to generate an awful lot of energy. Also, doesn't do much damage either. We go for a Night Sash. We get the boost with the Night Sash. That is absolutely amazing for us. Going to go for Night Sash number two, and we get a second boost once again. So we've already seen two back-to-back -back Night Sash boosts from these battles. The opponent swaps into Swampert. We make it to another Night Sash. We are double boosted. Night Sash takes out the Swampert. They come back in with the Steelix. We won't make it to what I think was a Heat Wave or an Overheat. I don't know. But we go for Sky Attack. That is resisted. They do farm us down. But can we farm them down? Yes, we can, and we barely take that game. Next, we've got X Academy Queen X, who recently won the competition in the Open Master League with a triple level 50 bug team consisting of Crustal, Galvantula, and Heracross. This time, she's chosen to submit a battle in the Open Ultra League, running a triple level 50 bug and flying theme team with Butterfree, Vespaquin, and Beautifly, which, by the way, none of them even get close to 2,500 CP, so let's just get into the battle. All right, so going into the battle here, you can see this is only at rank 12 so not going to be the highest level gameplay from the opponent and they're also running fortunately for us an iron tail tyranitar because if this was smackdown it would literally rinse through our entire team but we full send the bug buds one shotting the tyranitar they come in with greninja and unfortunately because we're running confusion we're not doing very much fast move damage so we're going to shield up the hydro cannon and then swap into our vespaquin here as we can deal super effective damage with the fury cutters and the x scissor the opponent responds with a venusaur which unfortunately isn't a very good response to a vespaquin even with a CP advantage. We're now gonna go for the back-to-back -back X Scissors, grabbing the shield with the first one, dealing some okay damage with the second one, although X Scissor, not the strongest move, and it is only neutral. The opponent goes for a Petal Blizzard. What is going on here? We're now gonna go for another X Scissor, and this should hopefully put them into range where we can farm them down, but let's see. We're actually gonna go for another X Scissor, making sure they don't get off another charge move. Doesn't really matter, but X Scissor will take out the Venusaur, and the opponent is gonna make it to a Hydra Cannon. Vespaquin is fairly bulky, 
despite only being 2200 CP and we should be able to over farm here throwing just before they make it to a third hydro cannon and X is a is going to grab the final shield from the opponent they do throw just before we make it to the final X is a the hydro cannon does take us out we come back in with the butter free and we're actually going to go for a BM psychic this is double resisted and we only get a great as well but actually it doesn't quite take them out there doesn't really matter because we can come in with our beautifly go for one infestation take out Greninja and take that game next we've got Emerald Nightmare who previously won in the open ultra league running the forces of nature trio Landorus Tornadus and Thunderous with all three Pokemon running focus blast as their only charge move this time they've submitted a battle in the great league running Suicune Crawdont and Shadow Golduck with all three Pokemon only running Bubble Beam. So let's just get into the battle now. Into the next battle, we see Suicune leading into Galarian Stunfisk. Now we are going to be running Ice Fang as the fast move because we are running a triple Bubble Beam exclusive team. We kind of need some fast move pressure with our Pokemon. So we go for the Bubble Beam, grabbing a shield from Galarian Stunfisk, which is really nice. Of course, Bubble Beam not going to do much damage at all, but it doesn't really matter if they shield or not because... I mean, it's not like we've got harder hitting charge moves to throw in the back. So they go for the Earthquake. We do live it because of the Bubble Beam. We make it to a second Bubble Beam. And this should lower their attack once again. They will be able to go for a Rock Side to take us out. But I think we will just let Suicune go down. So we're going to let the Rock Side go through. Come in with our Crawdont. And we are running Waterfall as the fast move. They come in with a Shadow Swamper. And we make it to the Bubble Beam once again. And this Bubble Beam will grab the final shield from the opponent. And now we can actually tank a Hydro Cannon from this range. It still does quite a lot of damage considering that was debuffed. But we're now going to go and shield this up. And probably commit to the fast move farm down. No, we're actually going to let it go through. Come in, get the Confusion farm down with our Shadow Gold Duck. And what does the opponent have in the back? It is a Trevenant. And unfortunately, we're not running Ice Beam, which would easily take them out. But here we can just spam Bubble Beams, lowering their attack. And hopefully, we should be able to output more fast move pressure. The opponent makes a catch onto Galarian Stunfisk. But that might be even better for us as the Bubble Beam takes them out. And we've got two shields remaining. So we can safely shield both Seed Bombs if they get there. And go for the full Confusion Farm Down to take that game. Next, we got a recent Battle of Spice winner, MEJP2, who won in the single type cup with a triple XL team with Whelmer, Meltan, and Eevee. This time, they've also chosen to submit another triple XL team in the Open Great League with Curlia, Eevee, and a slightly underleveled Bergmite. Let's get into the battle now. Alright, so going into the next game, we see Curlia leading into a Shadow Polyrath. Great lead, even though we are only at 1087 CP. We then swap into Bergmite, countering this Noctowl save swap. Unfortunately, we were running Tackle as the fast move, so not going to deal an awful lot of fast move pressure. But we are running Icy Wind, so we can lower their attack. And Icy Wind will be grabbing a shield back from the opponent. Although, honestly, a Shadow Ball or a Sky Attack probably still takes us out or gets us very low. So we are going to double shield. It is the Shadow Ball, and now we will make it to another Icy Wind. This will double debuff their attack. The opponent lets it go through. It still doesn't quite take them out here. And the opponent's going to bank a ton of energy, swap back into Polyrath, but we make it to the Disarming Voice on our Curlia. And Disarming Voice will take out the Shadow Polyrath. They come back in with the Noctowl. They go for a charge move straight away. Shadow Ball takes out the Curlia, but we come in, we get the Tackle Farm down up against the Noctowl, and they've got a Diggersby in the back. Now, Diggersby incredibly bulky, but we will lower their attack with the Icy Wind, and if they go for the mud shot farm down we're gonna make it to another charge move so they're forced to throw their energy here fire punch takes out the bergmite and we've got a level 50 ev remaining we're gonna go for the body slam we can spam it incredibly fast with quick attack and body slam but let's see the opponent is gonna go for a charge move here this is going to be an earthquake it does not do that much damage actually after the debuff and we should still be able to live a fire punch from this range we do live it quite comfortably we make it to the back-to-back -back body slam the first one will get the Diggersby incredibly low and the second body slam will be enough damage to take out the Diggersby and we take that game. And finally, we've got Unishek, another two-time Battle of Spice champion, winning in the Willpower Cup with Breloom, Galarian Mr. Mime, and Mr. Rhyme, and as well winning in the Master League Premier Classic Cup with Ursaring, Lucario, and Flygon. This time, they're running Overcast, Cherim, Mothim, and Star Raptor in the Great League, so let's just get into the final battle. All right, so going into the final battle, we see an Overcast Cherim leading into Togo Damaru. This is actually quite awful for us because it completely core breaks the entire team, 
but the opponent's going to go for a charge move here, throwing on alignment. They go for wild charge, which does do some nice damage, even though it's resisted, but it double debuffs their defense, meaning they're probably going to shield up the dazzling gleam here from this Cherim, and now they do make it to another charge move. We're kind of forced to shield this up, as if they get a wild charge off onto either Pokemon in the back, then it's going to be game over. We're now going to go for another dazzling gleam, grabbing the final shield from the opponent. They're going to overfarm quite a lot, and then swap into Jellicent. We barely make it to another dazzling gleam. This isn't going to do too much damage, but it should put them into range where we might even be able to farm down with our Star Raptor. We're going to over farm here and we swap, we catch onto the Mothim and I've never seen this Pokemon in battle. Surf does quite a significant amount of damage and we're going to fully sacrifice it here. So Surf will take out the Mothim, but we can come in, go for the full wing attack farm down and they've got a Ludicolo in the back. So all we have to do is farm to 100 energy. Brave Bird will be one shotting the Ludicolo and we can now go for the close combat and this will easily be enough damage to take out Togedemaru and we take that game. So that's going to be it for today's video. If you did enjoy it, make sure you leave a like, leave a comment letting me know and as well, don't forget to respond to the question of the day if you haven't done so already and don't forget you will be able to vote for your favourite spicy team in the polls that will be here on YouTube in just a few hours. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. That way you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. But with that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video and I hope you have a great rest of your day.